Doug Wiley with Police Magazine. I'm here with my very good friend Don Always. We're here at the ILEDA conference in St. Louis, Missouri, 2019. It's great to see you again this Black year. Watch. It's my 10th ILEDA. I can't believe it's 10 oh. years. One of the things that we've talked about in the hallways at ILEDA for years now is it, the terrible tragedy of what I call blue on blue. Yes. Uh, I really dislike the phrase friendly fire um, because we have instances where uh, there's so much confusion going on, or you have an off-duty officer who doesn't necessarily do the best job of, of identifying himself. How can we be better aware, more aware, and better prepared to prevent these blue-on-blue -blue instances of officer? Officers are injured and killed. And I'll go beyond that. Yeah. We don't want the police shooting other good guys. Right. It's not right. just other cops, right. although that's that's certainly a bigger problem. Yeah. Just remember, we're showing up at a call, and, and I always default to active shooter because that's what I spend most of my time training on. And we're showing up in a very chaotic situation where there's a lot of intense violence going along on, at least we think there is. Right. And we've got to sort out things very quickly. And it's very easy if our training is not adequate. If we haven't trained on the right things, we'll make the wrong decisions. And can you imagine what that would be like for an officer to show up, use deadly force against a subject at an active shooter call, and find out that the person who just shot was the hero that had saved all the people in the building? Right. And we've had things like that that have happened. We've had instances where a bouncer breaking up a bar fight. Yes. You've had security guards who are responding yes. to shoplifter or what. Yes. It, there are myriad ways in which the good guy with the gun Yes. Maybe it's an off-duty officer, maybe yes. it's a retired officer, maybe it's yes. someone who's you know, just a NRA-trained, concealed carry citizen mm -hmm. who's responding. We talked earlier about uh, you know, the, the fella in Texas who yes. defeated those two terrorists. Yes. What if the cops showed up on scene yes. and mistook that hero yes. for being a bad guy? Well, in the past 14 months, we've had at least four incidents in active shooter events that I'm aware of where we've had cases of blue on blue or friendly fire. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, a Maryland officer killed, plain clothes, he was responding to an active shooter call at, at a, a station, yeah. and was killed by fellow officers. We've had a situation in Texas where a shooter came into a, a, a food kitchen and was shooting the place up and was disarmed by one of the, the victims who was holding the gun when the officers arrived and they shot him. Right. Fortunately, he lived. We had a security guard at a hospital outside of Chicago killed by police when they showed up and mistook him for the shooter. So we know that this stuff happens. We know we've had a lot of close calls. The scenarios that, that I run in, in our active shooter classes, I see a 50% rate of shooting yeah. uh, an officer that they know is on scene that has three forms of ID, a badge around the neck, mm -hmm a bright wristband that says police, mm -hmm. and a don't shoot me safety band. TSM, yeah. And the officers are told there's an officer on scene, and that they respond, and as late as last week, three out of seven groups shot them. Yeah. And uh, something was very telling to me. I, I had the opportunity in the past couple of years to teach one of uh, a federal agency who have superb shooters. They may be the best shooters of any group and they had the highest rate of shooting friendlies. Hmm. Their, their skills with firearms were so good that it would outrun their skill at actually pulling the trigger was outrun their ability to correctly yeah. decide who to shoot. So how do we address that? Number one, for law enforcement, we're training two sides of the problem. Mm -hmm. There's the side of the, the plainclothes officer. What should you do if you've been involved in a fight when you're in plainclothes? Yeah. You preempted my next question. <laughs> we, we've known each other for a while. Yeah. So what we tell them is if you're off duty, if you're in plain clothes and you get involved in something, you need to start communicating right away. So imagine how helpful it would be to responding officers if, if they're coming into the building or down the hallway, they're hearing someone yell, police, don't move. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that's a huge clue. Of course, never point your gun at a uniformed officer. Right. We know what to expect on that. So there are some simple things we can train our plain clothes people to do. And plain clothes means off duty. Right. As long as you're not in your. Now, let's talk about the, the on duty side or 
actually this fits on everyone. One of the things that, that I've seen, and this may hurt some people's feelings, and that's okay because we need to talk about the hard, hard points. That's what we do here at LA. That's That's what we've got to do. Mm -hmm. The ready positions that we're teaching. If you're teaching a ready position that allows you to outrun your OODA loop, it allows you, like that federal agency I was talking about, you can shoot faster than you can decide who to shoot, then you will have a problem. Right. So one of the things that we've seen is some kind of depressed ready. Like a Sewell? Or a, a Sewell, yes. Sewell is, is one thing. Uh, indoor ready, there's all kinds of depressed readies. I would even say a, a Navy ready with okay. long gun up yeah. would be acceptable. But the fast part of, of engaging in deadly force, the fast part of that is not manipulating a weapon. The fast part is deciding who to shoot and when. Yeah. And so this bringing the weapon up, taking the safety off on an AR platform, that's not the slow part. So we're, we need to be training our officers to have a ready position that allows them to see what's going on, mm -hmm. not block up their vision, not make their world compress down the top of their gun. Because the, the more they see of the world, the better their decisions will be. And a little bit of buffer time mm -hmm. so they can decide who to shoot, that's going to be important. Yeah. The, and the, you have addressed this, the person, the good guy with the gun, Yes. the most important thing to do when the, good, when the other good guys show up yes. is drop the gun. Put it. Don't, don't, you don't need threat. it anymore. Don't you don't need threat. it. Exactly. Yes. exactly. One other thing, a gentleman who, by the name of Paul Howell, hmm. yeah. Combat Shooting and Tactics. Yeah. This came, I think, from him years ago. Uh, at least I give him credit for it. The whole body scan. For two generations, we've taught American police to watch the hands, watch the hands. And to this day, when officers in our, our scenario training, when they shoot the good guys, they will have seen a gun in the hand. And that's the last thing they saw before they pulled the trigger. Mm -hmm. Paul Howe has taught us the whole, the concept of the whole body scan. And from what I understand, that that's now even evolved into everything up to and including the expression on the face. Right. And yeah, is that perfect? No, it's not. But still, if you stop at, and only seeing a weapon in the hand, yeah. you're going to make the wrong decision sometime. Yeah. There's more to shooting people. My dad, I'll leave you with this, my dad taught me this many, many years ago. Perfect is impossible. If yes. we strive for excellence, it's achievable. Uh, so that's what smart we're going Smart man. Yeah, he was a very, very smart man. It's too bad the apple fell pretty far <laughs> from that tree. Uh, thank you, Don, for everything that you do You're for welcome. law enforcement, all of the training that you do, uh, and again, I appreciate your time today. Sure, thank you. Doug Wyler, Police Magazine.